Good day to you all. With you a Sakwar, and today in Mobile Hero Wars, I will show you how to pass dungeons so infinite and get the maximum amount of Titanite in a game day. Subscribe to this channel. There will be a lot of interesting and unusual content. I recently held a stream in which I tried to break the world record for Titanite per game day, which at the time was 123,456 Titanite. The attempt took place and a new record of 125,610 Titanite was set. The value didn't go much further, but it still wasn't really easy to do. Passing dungeon for 24 hours was not only a test of endurance of my whole body, but also an opportunity to learn absolutely all the subtleties of management and conservation of titans, because in no case can not be allowed to die at least one of them, which is, in fact, absolutely real, and it was demonstrated. By the end of the stream, all the titans were alive and at full health scales. More than 98% of the time I went through rooms in automatic battles and only about 2% manually. After trying a lot of different approaches during the broadcast, I found out a lot of interesting nuances, which helped me to reduce the number of manual titans fights to almost zero and keep all titans full health for the rest of the day easier. Now I am happy to share with you all the secrets I have learned. On the screen, you can already observe the logic of passing dungeon and mark for yourself some interesting moments under the background of my reflections. By the way, write right now in the comments about how much Titanite I can accumulate in this video. If anything, the original length of the passage is exactly one hour, but I sped up the recording a bit so as not to drag out this video. So, the most important secrets only three, so this video is conditionally divided into three parts. In part one we will talk about pumping titans and their artifacts in particular, as well as which titans for dungeon as a whole are fundamental. In part 2, we'll look at the logic of passing elemental rooms. Separately, let's analyze which titans and how to use them in water, fire, and earth rooms. In part 3, however, we will discuss common rooms and who to put out there to get the most out of them, prepare for the worst scenarios, successfully survive them, and turn the situation to your advantage. The rest of the video will be a dungeon recording, and you can watch it to the end to see for yourself all the intricacies of shuffling titans between rooms by my example. There will not be manual battles, with them the video would take a couple of hours. It is important to me to bring you to the principle, and play by hand is a whole art which is not learned in 20 minutes of narration. Perhaps some of my decisions when choosing rooms taken unconsciously, and I really cannot explain them, because all the same understanding of how to manage titans in dungeon in each case comes only with experience, and I cannot analyze absolutely every situation because they can be well, very much. However, they are all pretty similar and in one full hour you can see most of them, and for that, this video will only do you good if you have any questions left after my story. And so here we go. Let's start with the most basic of all, the Titans pumping. All of the Titans, shown in this video and with which to pass the dungeon, are fully pumped, but not all of them we will use, so not all of them need to pump. But who and what exactly should be pumped to pass dungeon? The fundamental triad of titans that allow you to dig titanite indefinitely is Sigurd, Hyperion, and Avalon. It's all about their first artifact with the same effect, which gradually restores health of all titans in the team within seconds after applying ultimate. Because of this, for example, the water room is virtually immortal, as two of the four titans of water have an artifact with this effect, but about this a little later, plus Sigurd's shield, which gives him invulnerability to any damage for 5 seconds, makes this titan the toughest tank that can withstand huge amounts of damage without a single exposure to danger. He is the most key tank for dungeon, because no one else can absorb so much damage. Although he has slightly less health than Angus and Moloch, they both still act as attacking tanks, the purpose of which is to inflict powerful damage and end the battle as quickly as possible. They are not designed for a long stay in a dungeon as a main tank that does not lose health. Sigurd in turn does not need to deal any damage, any other titans will do it for him, while he will protect them and himself with his shield. Hyperion is a titan of water, the same element as Sigurd, has a powerful ultimate in his arsenal, dealing quite a lot of damage to all opponents at once. But what really matters is the treatment with his additional ability, triggered at the beginning of the battle and recharged every 20 seconds. The healing volume of over 1,300,000 units is quite impressive. 
and is about 15% of a Titan's maximum health if you bring the health of all Titans to the average, which is 10 million, and Avalon's shield from his ultimate, although shared, but its volume of more than 1,800,000 is very saving because briefly does not let the allied Titans spend health. This is especially important when one of your allies is in poor health. All three of these titans simply need to prioritize pumping the first artifact in both stardom and level. Also very important first artifacts to those titans who will be used in the elemental rooms. These are such titans as Silva and Igmes. I'll explain the reasons later. Now let me say something about the second and third artifact. Recall that the second artifact mainly helps in the elemental rooms, increasing protection against the element found there and increasing damage on them. And the third artifact simply increases physical attack and health of the titan in a fixed way. So given these factors, the priority on the pumping of all artifacts titans for dungeon, including the second and third in your screen. This is exactly my view and the final decision is up to you, as I favor more universal strategies and obviously the second artifact mostly helps in elemental rooms, but because of this factor it should not be ignored. The second artifact is needed first of all for titans in their element, and if resources are slightly more than usual, it is also needed for those titans that you do not put in the mixed room, for example, Silva. But the priority is to swing it for tank titans, in fire is Araji, in earth is Avalon, and in water obviously Sigurd. Why Aragi and Avalon tank in elemental rooms I will explain a little later. For mixed rooms the second artifact is less useful because it is far from the fact that you will come across the same packs with obvious elements and, accordingly, the third artifact is more versatile and better suited for mixed rooms. Let me tell you right away that getting through them is the most key moment for successful progression through the floors as a whole. So no matter how you slice it, the same Sigurd will have to pump both artifacts, and in general he should be pumped out as much as possible so that he lived in such rooms as much time as possible. This can be said about pumping any titan. In any case, to pump out all very expensive, so it is better to do it in proportion. Proportion. In what proportions? On your screen. Once again, here are the top three factors in prioritizing pumping titans for dungeon. The first is whether this titan is part of the triad of healers. Recall that it is Sigurd, Avalon, and Hyperion. The second is whether this titan tanks in his elemental room. And the third is whether this titanium participates in mixed rooms as the main one. We'll get to that. Hopefully this slightly intricate picture can guide you on pumping. At least some of the questions will go away after I I tell you how to act in each specific elemental room. That's what we're going to do now. Before starting dungeon in general, if you have a choice of mixed in any elemental room, it is better to choose the elemental, because in the mixed room the tank and maybe a few more titans will lose quite a lot of health, as both teams will start in equal conditions with zero energy. The most ideal way to start is with three elemental rooms, one for each element, water, earth, and fire, so that everyone fights their first and is at least somewhat charged. Charged. This is necessary so that you can safely go to the common room and immediately begin to treat those who are slightly wounded in the elements. What exactly are the titans needed for each element in their rooms? I'll tell you right away that in spontaneous rooms it's obvious you always need supers, but tanks, with the exception of Sigurd, are practically unnecessary. Angus and Moloch are used only in the first battle of each element to trade their health and allow the other titans to accumulate energy, saving their personal health. Titans of the element water are used in their rooms in full and in fact there they are immortal, as two artifacts to restore health and healing from Hyperion allow to heal Sigurd exceptionally well, and he can tank against fire titans flawlessly as his shield from the ultimate blocks all damage and control effects coming to him. Plus, the specificity of titans of fire is that the damage from their abilities is flown to the first closest opponent, which is Sigurd. Often their ults go nowhere, which is why Sigurd stands so well against them all. Also, don't underestimate the role of Nova and Mary. Their huge advantage in the dungeon is that they absolutely do not require pumping. You can keep them completely without artifacts and skins, since the main task of these titans is to control them. For example, Mary does not have any of her parameters tied to ultimate at all. Therefore, regardless of her health or physical attack, she will always use her ability to reduce all opponents' attack rate by 40%. Nova, on the other hand, has a tie in 
immune to physical attack, but the damage from her ultimate is so insignificant compared to the effect of stunning the back rows for four seconds that you can ignore it. In any case, both of these titans behind Sigurd are perfectly safe, and their control makes life even more difficult for the fire titans, making it impossible to kill him unexpectedly. So that's how things are in the water room. In the fire element titans room only two are used, Araji and Ignis. Araji, with his acceleration due to his additional ability, and his ultimate, the damage of which is greatly enhanced by Ignis, is able to destroy titans of the earth extremely quickly, losing about from 10% and up to 30% of his health per battle, converting all the received damage back into energy. The damage is really huge, especially when both Ignis and Araji are fully charged before the fight. In this case, the Super Titan of Fire can lose about 5% of his health and easily end the battle, since Titans of Earth are much slower than this fiery couple. There is no need to use Vulcan with them, because his health is already almost 1 million less, and the damage is more than enough from Araji, especially since Ignis is giving away an effect on Earth Titan's damage protection from the first artifact. Speaking of which, the elemental room of the Earth Titans is passed with the help of three characters, Avalon, Eden, and Silva. Avalon acts as a tank here and by trading his health he gets energy, and energy for him is extra strength from the shield, plus healing from the first artifact for his whole team and himself. The specificity of Water Titans is that they do little damage on their own. Only Hyperion can do serious damage. And for Earth Titans this is not a problem, as they have the highest health scores of all the roles of Titans of other elements. In addition, Eden himself does quite a bit of damage with Ultimate, and the function of removing the opponent's character from the battlefield for 6 seconds is flawless and allows the Earth Titans to gain numerical parity or even advantage. Also, Avalon's tanking function is facilitated by the first artifact with effect on protection against titans of the element of water of Eden himself, and the same artifact is available for Silva. It is for this reason that she is the third character in this pack. It's a good thing that as a marksman she is positioned behind everyone else, not like Vulcan and Nova, otherwise she could not be used and passing earth floors with only Eden and Avalon would be very difficult. And getting back to talking about tanks in general, Angus and Moloch are used in exceptional cases when the health of the other titans dropped. For example, when Avalon has less than 30% HP, it's better to reinsure taking Angus. So Avalon will restore some of his health at the expense of the first artifact and by the mixed room will be ready to restore some more health. I try not to go lower than 30% for a tanking titan in each of the elements for two reasons. First, it is not a fact that in a common room, a titan with a loss of health will be able to restore this health well in one battle. The second reason stems from the first and is that in dungeon after a mixed room can fall three times in a row rooms of the same element, and this is a very dangerous point. And that's because if your tank titan, let's say Araji, has extremely low health, even Moloch and Vulcan can't save him, because if he fails to recharge with low energy, he may not have time to incinerate everyone and the same brick from Eden will land on his head and have to do something with it. Also extremely rare, but I have had cases where the floor after the mixed room came across, say, three fire and after them to choose water and earth, and then on a new floor, again two fire rooms. This is a very dangerous situation and no one is immune from them, so to avoid it, if possible, you should prioritize beating elemental rooms just like that. The highest priority is water, then earth, and then fire. For example, if you choose land or water, you should choose water. By the way, if the choice is between an elemental and a mixed room, then obviously the mixed room is the choice. The exception is Sigurd, who has less than 50% health. In that case, you have to choose a water room and always try to play by hand, curing him as much as possible. Between earth and fire, you have to choose the earth room, and everything is clear with the fire and water rooms, water. The element of water, as mentioned earlier, is virtually unkillable. Element of earth is more resistant due to two artifacts for protection against water, plus the tanker Avalon stands well under the shields, heals himself and his allies. Araji and Ignis, though they win quickly, they only exchange their HP. However, it is important to note here that one should not trade the health of the same aval into extremes. For example, if presented with a case of choosing two rooms between earth and fire, we choose earth, then see only one earth room two times in a row, pass them and again see the earth and fire. In that case, it's better to save at least from 30% and up to 60% of Avalon's health and activate the fire room with 100% Araji 
Enigmes. I think the message is clear. And now we come to the most interesting part, the mixed rooms. Their role is quite simple, to heal all those titans who have fallen in health in their elemental rooms. These titans are often Aragi, Avalon, and, to a lesser extent, Ignis. Even rarer are Moloch and Angus. The structure of a pack of titans in a mixed room must always look like this. The Triad Hyperion, Sigurd, Avalon, as well as Eaton and the fifth titan is the one that needs to be healed. If no one needs to be treated, then we put Aragi. Under no circumstances can you change someone from the Triad or the same Eaton to cure two titans at once. It will not work. You will only make it worse. Focus on treating one titan at a time. It is important to understand that when healing another titan, Sigurd loses health in the first place because the healing from Hyperion's ability flies to another character and our tank continues to absorb damage. That's why you can often see that. For example, Aragi with 20% health can restore it in a mixed room up to the maximum level, but Sigurd himself will noticeably suffer. And if you can trade the health of Aragi or Avalon up to 30%, then with Sigurd better not to go over this value of 50%, because it can be more difficult to treat him than the first two titans. Because he at the same time still tanks on the first line and count on the appearance of water room is not worth it. I haven't figured out the exact algorithm for creating elemental rooms, but I've noticed that the more the entire element element suffers in total health of all the titans inside it, the more often that this elemental room is found. And if with fire it is fraught, for water and the suffering Sigurd in particular, it is a salvation. So in the common room, treat any one titan, but don't forget to keep an eye on your water tank. As for Kiros and Ammon, I haven't used them once in the entire stream, I think it's excessive. It's also worth noting that when choosing elemental rooms I also pay attention to the amount of energy accumulated by all my titans. Our game allows you to do this before the fight itself. And sometimes I violate my own approach and give priority to another element, only to have them more and better energized to meet the mixed room. How exactly I try to equalize the degree of charge of all titans, I'm afraid I can't tell you, but if I can, I will attach to the screen an algorithm that I follow in this aspect. I feel that on the perception of this video is already far from easy, so now I propose to put a point in parsing the mechanics of passing dungeon. I hope I have clarified for you some obscure things, and that you have learned something new. If so, subscribe to my channel, it's easy for you and it's good for me. All the more reason for even more interesting videos to come. This video will continue with music, so you can quietly finish watching the process of passing dungeon, which in total took me an hour. At the end you will see how much time night I have accumulated in these 60 minutes. Thank you all for watching. See you again soon.